Welcome back to the Discord Mead series. In this series, I hand the reins over to a member of my Discord to make a recipe that I have to make. They can go as crazy or as simple as they want, and this mead did not disappoint. The leader of this mead is Pockyman, and he wanted to do something a little different with some different fruits. After he polled some people in the Discord for what sort of mead they want to make, they landed on a lychee and passion fruit mead. They also wanted to use a fun accompanying honey, so they chose guava honey. Here's the recipe for this brew. I know it has quite a few things in it that are not easily accessible for everyone. So if you want to make this, you might have to make some small tweaks. I personally had to track down the fruits through various avenues because they were hard to find. This brew also has some different steps in when you add specific fruits and things, and you'll see that as we go along, and I'll explain that. So Pokemon wanted me to carbonate this brew, and that's what I did. I think you could also do it in a non-carbonated fashion if you wanted to do that. I got the honey from Sean Harris, who's the owner of Wow Keely Honey. I got the lychee from Amazon. I had to use canned lychee because finding fresh was almost impossible. The passion fruit came from Whole Foods in the frozen section, but I recently saw it at Walmart and the yeast was ordered through an online brew shop because my local brew shop didn't have it. All of the other stuff can be found in your local brew shop or online. After collecting all of my ingredients, we first started by sanitizing all of our equipment we are going to use. Pocky Man wanted me to use the lychee syrup from the cans of lychee in the primary, but keep the meat of it until the secondary. We put together our honey, water, yeast, lychee juice, and passion fruit. After mixing our ingredients together, we had a starting gravity of 1.056. This was a little under what he wanted, but we're rolling with it. We added our yeast nutrients over the course of a few days and let it start fermenting. This brew fermented through everything in about two weeks and was ready to move to the next steps. We pulled our frozen fruit out to thaw and added pectic enzyme to help break down the lychee skins. We then stabilized our brew with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. We did this so we can safely back sweeten with whatever sugar we wanted. You can alternatively pasteurize your brew if you'd rather do that. After about 24 hours, we added the lychee fruit to this brew and let those sit for about 10 days. At the 10 day mark, we racked off that fruit and back sweetened with our guava honey. The final gravity for this is about 1.020. We then put it into a keg and carbonated it. This brew is really fun and interesting. So Pocky Man didn't really want to be on camera, so I got my good friend doing the most to come taste it with me. I did send Pocky Man a bottle, and he gave me his notes on what he thought about it. You'll see those at the end. For now, enjoy this tasting. So, BC, welcome back. Whoa, welcome back to the tasting station. <laughs> Tasting Did you notice, station. Notice the tablecloth. Yeah, it, you got linens this time. I am. <laughs> I'm stepping it up. Bushy. One one little thing at a time. <laughs> um, we're tasting this passion fruit and lychee mead with okay. guava honey. It's carbonated. It's like six and a half, maybe seven percent. Okay. So it's in the keg out there, but I just I can some, so I just nice. So I did that. Let's see. Because you have to show that off, right? Yeah. Why not? You've invested so, in it. And uh, I don't think I've ever had guava honey. Well, here you go. So. That's what it looks like. I think, it, ooh. Nice little pour. Mm hmm It's got some haze to it. A little bit of haze, but I also don't really, uh, I'm not that concerned about haze, to be honest with you. <laughs> I try, did I try to clear this? No, I didn't. I, um, I think he included bentonite in the beginning, primary, mm. and I just, I didn't actually oh, put okay. bentonite in. I've been doing that more and more lately. I probably should. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probably. I, I don't know how much it's helping, but like, I also feel like it can't hurt. It can't hurt. Yeah. Right. I mean. All right. So, what do you got on the nose? It's tropical. It is. Yes. It's like, not. There's no. There's nothing that's jumping out. Hmm. You know, it's just like, tropical. Yeah. Like it is very. <laughs> the, the word tropical. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> if you smell, if you were to smell the word tropical, this is what it is. Like if I went to to Applebee's and they said, "Oh, we've got a we've got a tropical margarita on the machine," yeah. and you know, they... Right. That's what I'm I, smelling. Is have you like, ever had lychee before? I've eaten one. It's an interesting one. It's a weird... I, don't, I honestly don't remember it's what it's like. It's like kind of like... It felt grapey Floral? To me. Yeah, it was a weird like hybrid. And then passion fruit, you know. I, you might have had passion fruit somewhere. But. Mm, no, I've had a lot of passion fruit um, down in South America. Let's go for it. But nothing really is jumping out to me. 
I'm also say it tastes a little bit different than I, I feel like it smells. It's got a similar vibe, but there's mm -hmm. some more things that yeah. pop out. It's pretty good actually. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's also doesn't taste super tropical. It's got like a, again, like a tropical smoothie <clears throat> yeah. kind of flavor, but there is a, there's like a tangy citrusy note in there, which I guess would come from the passion fruit. Yeah, a little bit of that. That uh, I really like. It comes on right in the mid palate, mm -hmm. and then it lingers after. The guava honey could have some of that. I honestly don't recall the the me tasting it individually. You know, sometimes like lemon blossom is really bright. Mm -hmm. It could be that guava has a little bit of that in there as well. It's pretty crushable. I'll say no, I like I like the carbonation. The sweetness level is that you nailed that. It's not too sweet, mm -hmm. but it's also not too dry. And right. so you're that that balance between the sweetness and the carbonation is uh -huh. really nice. Again, like you said, it's crushable. Pretty good. This is the only time you made this? Yes. All First right. time. Now, I, I do like this recipe. I think it's actually really cool. The problem is lychee is super hard to find. I don't know if you've ever tried to track it down. It is so hard to get. We can get it from the Asian market. Here. I couldn't. They didn't have it? I looked. I went. Mm. I went and ventured because that was my first spot. May, I was like, may have been out of it. season. Maybe. They so, usually have them up by the register in like a little net bag mm, that, where you can Maybe like, I just somehow missed it. <clears throat> I mean, it could have been out of season though. Right. Well, I went canned. Canned's expensive. Like yeah. it was like thirty bucks for like six cans, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is outlandish. The passion fruit was a little hard to track down, although like I had to go to natural grocers or somewhere to find it. Okay. Um, guava honey, hard to and source. You got, like actual passion fruits? No, frozen. Frozen. Okay. Yeah, I went frozen because it's just easier. And oh, I think yeah. I think uh, Pocky Man, who's the guy who who did this recipe, mm -hmm. um, also did frozen. So I was trying to mimic his his stuff as well. It's pretty dang good though. It's gonna be hard to recreate though with those recipes, with those uh, yeah, ingredients. That's a that's a wacky ingredients list, but it turned out really nice. Yeah. Like I, I kind of don't hate that I can't taste all of those mm -hmm. things. Like if this was coming to Mead Stampede and you just put like tropical hydromel mm -hmm. on there, I'd be yeah. like, you friggin' nailed it. But if you said, oh, passion it's passion <laughs> fruit, guava, honey, all that, then I'd be like, well, I'm not picking out the different nuances in there, but like just, this is interesting. That's Trouble a good thing to note mead. too. Sometimes maybe being a little more vague in your <laughs> description might take you further than. Yeah, I mean, because it's really good. Right. And I don't want to like have my brain reaching for those mm -hmm. different ingredients when it is really exceptional. That's good. Well done, Pocky man. <laughs> you heard it here. Um, so he actually did a tasting of it as well. Not BC, Pocky man. And so here are his tasting notes for this brew and uh, I do have, he's sending me a bottle of his, so I'll probably throw in something real fast here. I me tasting his as well. So thanks BC. Thank you. This uh, is freaking good. See you soon. <laughs> All right, here we are for a quick tasting. Pocky man sent me his version. So I have his right here. Same, literally the recipe you saw on screen. Let's go ahead and taste them. See if there's any difference. All right. So on my right hand, your left is my version. His version, they look, Virtually identical. Mine has maybe a little more, bit more yellow in it. Carbonation level looks the same. Here we go. Here's his. Mm, yeah, bright um, nose. Definitely a lot of that passion fruit. Lychee, tropical. His has a little more brightness, I feel like. A little brighter nose. Mine has maybe a little more honey character on the nose and a mixture of that um, tropical. Here we go, let's taste his first. Yeah, I would say his is definitely bright. It has a little more of a, um, a little more bite, a little more acidity to it. Very sweet, very tropical juice. Um, like if it's a, like a pineapple was a little, like a pineapple that's less ripe and more bright kind of uh, acidic. That's kind of the vibe, but it's with that passion fruit and lychee. I like his, I like his, the brightness there. It is definitely very, very tropical, which is nice. Get the honey character kind of in there. That guava side is, is nice. It adds that extra floral value. It's pretty good. Here's mine. Yeah, mine definitely leans a little bit less into the passion fruit. It's not as like juice-esque, I would say, in that regard. He's got more brightness. Mine's more tempered down, but there's more carbonation. It's, it's just less, a little bit less of the fruit character, I would say. His has more of that fruit character. Mine's still there, but it's not as prominent. But they taste pretty dang similar, and they're both very, very good. Uh, he had some notes 
that he gave. He said, fragrance, less noticeable, but more, but sweetness sharper on the nose. Um, I think talking about his, mine is more fragrant and fresher on the nose. He said, taste, more tart lychee is less noticeable on the palate. Let's talk about mine. When comparing to my bottled version, more of a hard edge on yours where flavor feels much softer with my version. I think that's true. This is a really, really fun recipe. It's been a lot of fun to make and he did a great job. So here's what happens now. You can be the leader of the next Discord Mead. The way this works is you are gonna get onto my Discord, which link on screen, link in description to join. We have a specific channel where we uh, talk about these Discord Mead projects. Essentially, the whole thing, the whole point here is that I hand the reins over to somebody and they are the leader for that brew. You can discuss with the Discord how you want to make the next brew. You can just declare, hey, I want this to be the next brew. Essentially, you give me the recipe and whatever thing you wanna do, and then I make it, a bunch of other people make it if they want to. Um, you hopefully will make it too, and then we can do a little swap, and we have some fun with that. If you want to be the next Discord Mead leader, you need to go down in the description, or take the link on screen, and join the Discord. Within the week that this is posted, uh, Pocky Man, who is the leader of this one, he is gonna go ahead and pick the next Discord Mead leader. He decides, he kinda hands the reins over, and then you take over from there, and uh, you start designing and collaborating with the Discord. Go ahead and jump down below if you wanna do that. It's a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed this process. This is, we've done a bunch of these. So I hope to see you down in the Discord. It's a great way to just chat about mead if you don't necessarily wanna do the Discord thing, or sorry, if you don't wanna be the Discord mead leader, you can just come chat with us. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, check out that link. We are close kind of close to 50k subs and I hope you will hit like on this video because that just helps the algorithm and then of course hit subscribe. Uh, let's try and push to 50k subs. I would love to get there because uh, it's just a fun milestone. There's nothing special that happens other than it's just kind of cool to, to look at that number and go this is a growing community. So let's keep growing together. I will see you in the next video and maybe in the discord. See you next time. Cheers.